When Peter Zosky talked with Gary and Joni McGuffin earlier this year, they were about to cycle from Tuktoyuktuk to Inuvik on an ice road through the Mackenzie Delta. That was only the first leg of a cross-country journey that'll end at Lanceau Meadows in, at the northern tip of Newfoundland. Gary and Joni are now on their way along the Dempster Highway between Inuvik and Dawson in the Yukon, and Joni McGuffin is on the phone right now from Fort McPherson. Good morning. Good morning, Stuart. How are you? Just fine. What's the weather like up there? Well, it uh, looks pretty bright and sunny this morning. The weather up here changes so dramatically. Um, it was uh, snowing a little bit yesterday and freezing cold. Our poor feet uh, just made it through the day. <laughs> what are you wearing in your feet? Well, we only have um, our cycling shoes, which uh, they're... Like, little leather things? They part? Those little leather things? Uh, well, they are made of a, like a sort of cordura material, and they're um, just windproof more than anything else. <laughs> Now, you're, you're the guys that paddled right across the country for your honeymoon. Well, that, that's right. Uh, back at the beginning of April, we actually started this journey up at Tuck, and we cycled the ice road down to Inuvik, which was the last 120 miles of that canoe expedition. So when we left Inuvik on Monday, uh, we had fairly nice weather, and it was bright, and it was warm. We were just wearing our cycling shorts and our T-shirts, and then the very next day, it turned really cold, and we had to wear our windsuits and everything. It, it changes so much. Well, listen, Peter, when Peter Zosky last talked to you, you were just about to set off along the ice road. You've got to tell me about that. What was it like bicycling along a, a road of ice? <laughs> it was pretty cold. It was about 40 below when we left, and we found ourselves having to keep cycling because of the cold, and we were on the bikes for 11 hours for two days. And the ice road is so hard, they're just pounding along. It's not like this gravel here, which really gives. Uh, we actually uh, uh, never got off the bikes except to eat a quick chocolate bar. And uh, we had a little bit of a wind behind us, but as soon as we would stop, it would just be freezing. Well, what about night then? What did you do at night? Well, we camped in the Delta, and it was uh, was quite uh, interesting to be camping right over top of the frozen ocean. It really is an ice road. It's uh, just ice and there's all these uh, big cracks all over the place created by the trucks that move along there and you get your front wheel or back wheel in there and then you go right over the handlebars. <laughs> this, this is If Peter was here right now he'd go, holy Nelly! <laughs> well, we, was it scary? This, this road out here is lots of fun too. It's uh, um, Some places, the first 30 miles out of Inuvik, it's quite soft crushed gravel and you go very slowly in a real low gear to get up the hills because otherwise your tires just slide. Um, this is the, this is, you're on the Dempster Highway now. This is, it's just open, hasn't it? Yes, uh, actually this year it's very late. Uh, we were going to come up uh, the 1st of June and they said it's snowing and the ice is still in the river. So we waited a week and we timed it just right because this weekend the ferries uh, the Mackenzie and Peel Rivers, within the first uh, 150 miles of our journey here, they've just opened up, and we have to get across them. They're part of the Dempster route. So have you crossed any of the rivers yet? Is there any ice in there? No, no. Have you come to any of the rivers yet? Have you been on any of the ferries yet? I'm actually looking right over the Peel River right now. We crossed the Mackenzie yesterday by the ferry, and uh, we're coming up to the next one. It's, it's quite funny here in Fort McPherson because... Uh, there's only two stores. There's the Hudson Bay, and then there's the uh, Ted Lake Co-op, and uh, they're running really short of supplies because trucks haven't been able to get through. So people are looking for the tomatoes and the eggs and uh, real short supply of pampers. <laughs> short of pampers? <laughs> Good Lord. Holy Nelly. <laughs> have you had any accidents yet? Oh. I mean, I, I just suspect you, you're going to have some accidents, right? Yeah, um, I'm one of those women drivers, you know. <laughs> I got out front the other day, and I was just speeding along, and it was a nice hard pack. And then all of a sudden, I, I pulled to the shoulder, because Gary said, there's a truck truck coming. And I pulled into this soft gravel stuff, and, oh, I lost control. <laughs> and I swerved and swerved, and then I went over the handlebars. <laughs> and Gary... Joey, what's so funny? <laughs> he went right into the back of me, and he went over the handlebars, too. <laughs> so we put on a real good show for a couple of truck drivers. You, are you okay? Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> your, your bike's okay? Yeah, we're, all, we're okay. Our bikes are okay, too. That's the only thing we worry about. Yeah, it's, it's hard when you get up. I mean, you, if, you can run into problems because you can't carry everything that you need to carry, can you? Well, no, we, we've found uh, even carrying five days' worth of food is a lot for us. Um, we got about 40 pounds of stuff on our bikes, 
But at this time of year, we don't have to carry all the cold weather clothing that we did on the ice road. So right. things are a little bit better. How are you eating? Well, uh, we're just picking up what we can at the Hudson Bay store. Uh, because we can only carry such a little bit of food, we didn't bother with the food parcel drops like we did on the canoe expedition, where we pick up like a month's supply worth of food at each uh, RCMP detachment, uh, you know, in a month's worth of canoeing. What about, what about bugs? Is it too early for bugs yet? Yeah, hooray! <laughs> you got that coming, Joni. We're timing it just right because the summer is absolutely perfect here right now when the weather's nice because I'd rather have it snowing uh, than I would have black flies and mosquitoes. Well, where, where are you? I mean, you, t- you said you could see the Peel River. Where are you right now? Are you in a f- is someone's house or what? Yes, um, actually, um, Gerald Perron, he is the superintendent of marine operations here, looks after the ferries at the Mackenzie and Peel Rivers. And uh, we're at his house using his phone, and uh, we're looking right out over the Peel River. We have about another 10 kilometers before we reach the river itself and cross it. You, you say we're here. Gary's there, too? Yes, he is. Do you like to talk to him? Yeah, put Gary on the phone. Okay, Stuart, just a moment. Nice talking to you. Good morning, Stuart. Hi, Gary. How are you? I'm just fine, thank you. Let me ask it again. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing all right. You are? Yes. Yeah, huh. We're okay. What do you expect for the next, tell me about what you expect for the next couple hundred miles. Well, the next couple hundred miles, we actually uh, crossed the continental divide three times on our way down the Dempster Highway to Dawson City. So within the next 50 miles, we're going to be actually steadily climbing upwards uh, into the Richardson Mountains. And then we go down again into a plain at Eagle Plains and then up into the Mahoney Range down again and then up into the Ogilvy Mountains before we finally descend into Dawson City, and then it's back up again for a little while until we get down to Whitehorse. Let me ask you again how you're doing. <laughs> uh, it's fun cycling in the Arctic. What kind of bike are you? What kind of bike are you using? You're using you're using mountain bikes, right? Well, they're they're basically uh, a designed Nishiki Norco mountain bike, and we've adapted them by changing the handlebars, uh, changing the pedals, changing the shift levers. What did you do to the handlebars? Uh, <laughs> well, we just heated them up and bent them, bent them around a little bit so they would be a little bit more adaptable for cycling. Uh, usually with a, a mountain bike handlebar, they're a, just a long, a long bar that uh, isn't very good for, for changing your back angle or changing your hand position on it, so it's, uh, it can become quite tiresome just with your hands in one position all day long. You having any, yeah, are you having any trouble physically? I mean, your wrist's getting sore, back, bum, anything like that? Well, actually, uh, on the ice road, that was a, a good testing ground. So, uh, I, I developed some sort of a little twinge in my, my left knee that's, that's giving me a, yeah. a little bit of a problem right now, but uh, we're just we're just taking her easy. We don't want to put in too many hundred mile days on this this type of road surface. We're just sort of limiting ourselves to anywhere between 35 and 50 miles. And so, as long as we can stay under that type of mileage, we shouldn't develop anything too early. Which uh, I've d- I've done a lot of bike tripping or bike camping myself, and I always thought that when I was fully loaded up with tent and with ge- with gear, I always thought anything over 35 or 40 miles was a good day's work. <laughs> well. I guess when you look at a stretch, you know, you're, you're trying to cover 7,500 miles and you're trying to link the three oceans in Canada together. Uh, when you start looking at little Bonzo Meadow on the very northern tip of Newfoundland Island, it, uh, it kind of makes you wonder whether you should be trying to get in more miles than, than maybe what you should. But when are, you, when are you supposed to reach Newfoundland? Well, we'd like to be there uh, by the end of October. I know it'll be cold then. Uh, we're prepared to go into November for it. But uh, if we can get if we can get through the Maritimes in September, that would be it would be very nice. And to be to Newfoundland Island by the middle of October and make our way up the, the west coast there, uh, it, that would be best for us. If, if I if I was on the, if I if you guys passed me on the road this summer when I got the trailer out or just traveling whistling across the country, yeah. I mean I'm going to see lots of cyclists on the road. Is there any way that I'll recognize you two? That I'll know it's it, it, it's you guys? Uh, gee. Uh, well, we're, our bikes are white, our panniers, our, everything is red on them. There's just the two of us. We've got uh, yellow helmets with a real psychedelic paint job on them. And we should have uh, big, well, we don't have them right now, but we'll have these uh, fluorescent orange whip antennas with uh, little fluorescent flags on the top. And we'll have these T-shirts that says uh, Ultimate Traverse.
person on the front and Trans Canada Cycling Expedition, Arctic, P- Pacific, Atlantic on the back. And a, and a rose in your lapel? <laughs> just, just maybe, if it's a good day. Do you do all of your cooking out? You're cooking over... You're, it's camping, right? I mean, you're not... Uh, no, there aren't too many uh, motels along this stretch here. <laughs> so what's what's for supper t- the next night around the f- or next r- night around the t- the campfire? What'll be for supper? Well, it's uh, a lot of it's based around noodles, pasta, mm-hmm. and whatever we can add to that. Whatever's available at the Hudson Bay usually goes into the dish of pasta. <laughs> Tuna mac. That's right. When, can we talk to you next time you reach I don't know Dawson or Whitehorse or someplace like that? Yeah. Uh, Dawson City would be the best place for us. How long is that? From, how, how long until you get to Dawson? Uh, well, let's see. It's uh, 350 miles away, so we're looking at maybe a week. Okay. We'll give you a call. Or you give us a call, a call in a week. I'll still be here. Okay, Stuart. We will. Take it easy. Be careful. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Say goodbye to Joni, too. I certainly will. Gary and Joni McCuffin are en route across Canada by bicycle.